And now we will pass on to our third talk on uh, meditation and uh, its EEG correlates from Sekhath Melipedi, who's joining us from Bengaluru, India, from the Center of Consciousness Studies. Did I get that right? Excellent, excellent. So I'm just gonna unmute you here. Okay, and mute myself, you have the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to present my uh, PhD work. So the screen is visible, right? Yes. So the, my work is understanding the uh, practice of meditation on the brain using EEG. So uh, going to the background. So right now we know that like humanity is going through a lot of challenges, COVID-19 uh, being one of them. And uh, also there are a lot of challenges which we face right now starting from ranging from the you know rise of chronic diseases since 1990s and the rise of mental health issues over the past two decades. And add to this, there are rising population numbers and the aging population. All of these things pose a significant threat to human well-being. So one best way or one of the best ways to deal with this problem is meditation and the yogic tradition uh, which belongs to like the Indian Indian culture and all that. So meditation is the science of handling one's own mind and the body so that so that whatever issues which we face actually arise from the mind. So meditation is one method by which we can transcend the mind and deal with the issues which we face uh, in the everyday life. So as we can see in the figure, uh, there's a dramatic rise in the non-communicable diseases from 1990 till 2017. In 1990s, only 40% was NCDs. Uh, now it is almost 60%. And in, uh, communicable diseases have decreased. So uh, NCDs is like a huge burden on the society. So, uh, and uh, this burden is actually quite high in the develop developed nations, wherein 80% of the disease burden is from NCDs in high income countries. So you can see the disparity. I'm sorry, Sikath, can you uh, play your uh, presentation? So we can see the uh, the bigger the, the slide because right now it's in a oh is it okay not okay, in presentation okay. mode yeah thank you uh, is it fine super excellent yeah. thank you yeah so as we can see here the burden of NCDs has risen dramatically since 1990 so right now it is almost 60 percent compared to 40 percent in 1990 and this number is much higher in the developed nations wherein 80 percent of the disease burden is from ncds so they pose a significant burden to the society as well as to the economy of any nation actually so and also add to this the mental and substance use disorders even they have raised dramatically in the last you know uh, maybe post 1970s and all that so uh, mental uh, health conditions affect almost 10.7% of the world population. And that am amounts to almost 970 million people. And these are just reported numbers. There are many more unreported. These are quite undiagnosed actually, underrepresented. So in that sense, NCDs and mental health uh, issues prove a major barrier to public health and also you know, the well-being of the population. So as I told, meditation is one very effective method by which uh, we can deal with uh, NCDs at the same time, mental health issues. So just I'll just quickly go through the science of meditation and how does it work. So meditation, like it basically trains attention and emotion and awareness. So with practice of meditation, a kind of attention is developed wherein you clearly notice what's happening in the mind. And then uh, because of that, there is a certain awareness which develops and because of which whatever happens in the mind, it just it just something happening in the mind. Whatever is happening in the mind doesn't affect the person as such because of a certain distance which develops between the person and the mental content. So that's, and because of that, there's also emotional regulation which happens. And a lot of regions have been implicated uh, in meditation, for example, ACC, insula, prefrontal cortex, all these play a very important role in self-regulation at the same time effective decision-making, proper reasoning, et cetera. Insula is implicated in awareness. 
and a lot of studies report increased for example a uh, lot of report in uh, mra reports show that there is an increased gray matter in acc insula pfc in the long term meditators and there is altered functional connectivity in dmn which is quite prominently reported in the meditation uh, literature and then there is increased alpha and theta power in the in the meditators compared to the you know non meditators and then um, improved attention is seen increased p3 amplitude uh, increased alpha theta power all this is seen so overall this is what happens uh, practice of meditation leads to an increased self regulation wherein one can regulate his own mind and then that leads to enhanced well being so this is uh, in a nutshell how it works so the form of meditation which i have uh, which i am working on for my phd is isha yoga this is a like quite prominent uh, in india and also uh, all over the world right now so it has several components like uh, hatha yoga there is hatha yoga there is kriyas there is meditation there is chanting there's a it's a several aspects which you know with which one can work uh, on to achieve well being and then um, this is what i have been working on so what we did is like we recruited the uh, subjects from the local centers in bangalore and right now uh, uh, we have recruited like almost seven advanced meditators five novice meditators and six controls so advanced meditators are those who have been practicing for more than five years and also who have done a long term retreat and novice meditators are those who have who have not done this long term retreat who just have a short term practice say 6 months to 1 year and controls are those who don't have any meditation experience at all and this was the inclusion and exclusion criteria and this was a steady protocol the eg uh, was acquired using a 128 channel gap uh, from the egi with a sampling rate of 1 kilohertz and the data was processed in prep pipeline in eg lab and uh, matlab so this was how the steady was done so the subjects enter the lab uh, we put the electrode on them and then this is the protocol which they undergo first is the rest wherein they uh, it's like eyes open and eyes closed rest for 5 minutes and they undergo a certain cognitive task and then there's an again rest and then this is the uh, actual condition uh, where we uh, ask the person to do pranayam and meditation so this is for the controls for the controls it's an active control state of breath watching for the novice and advanced meditators they do a form of pranayam and a form of meditation which is called a shamavi mudra uh, it's a focused attention practice wherein the attention is on the breath movement of breath and then uh, it is subs- subsequently followed by 5 uh, minutes of rest so now we uh, compared uh, the, these groups controls novices and advanced meditators how they differ in uh, while doing pranayam and while doing the breath watching what were the differences seen so what we found was that uh this was the this is the power spectral plot for the pranayam so this is a form of pranayam wherein uh, it's it's called as alternative nostril breathing wherein you inhale from one nostril close the other nostril exhale from the other nostril and inhale from the other uh, the other nostril close the other nostril it's like uh, inverted u shape uh, alternative nostril breathing so in this what we saw is that as we can see in the uh, this is the power spectral plot wherein the color indicates uh, higher power for example uh, red whatever is red indicates higher power and whatever is blue indicates lower power so as we can see in the theta range that is 6 to 8 hertz the advanced practitioners add higher theta power uh, in the predominantly in the Uh, frontal uh, region frontal midline regions and also occipital regions compared to the controls and novice meditators so this uh, this actually what this indicates is that uh, there are uh, source localization studies which show that acc generates frontal midline theta and this frontal midline theta is is linked to the parasympathetic control so in the advanced practitioners when they do pranayam there is a higher vagal tone because of which the theta power goes up at the same time there is very high sense of relaxation and calmness which is seen during the practice which is not seen in the controls and it is seen to a lesser extent in the novices so similarly uh, what we see in the uh, this is what we see in the gamma range during pranayam that is 30 to 40 hertz again if we see here Uh, for the advanced meditators there is very high gamma in the 
uh, frontal regions and also the occipital regions, which was not seen in the controls and it was like less in the novices. Again, uh, this indicates that uh, there is very high sense of attention. Gamma, gamma oscillations generally tend to uh, reflect very high sense of attention and kind of perceptual binding and, you know, very high sense of awareness for what they're doing. So this is what we saw in the advanced meditators. And coming to the meditation, uh, this, as I told, is a focused attention practice, wherein the person has to focus on the breath. And uh, what happens is whenever he focuses on the breath, the mind tends to wander. And then the, the person has to I notice the mind wandering and bring back the attention to the breath. So that is, this is what happens. Uh, so there is, when the mind wandering happens, there is this default mode network, which is active. And then when he, he realizes that the mind has wandered, that's when saliency networks comes into picture and he brings back the attention to the uh, movement of the breath or the focusing on the breath. And then during that process, attentional networks come into picture, wherein he, he sustains the focus on the breath, which is the object of meditation for the practitioner. So this is what we observed for the, uh, uh, for, the uh, for the meditation condition in the theta range, which is six to eight hertz for the advanced controls and novice meditators. As we can see, again, there's a very high uh, theta power for the advanced practitioners as compared to the controls and novices. Similar thing was seen for the gamma range, 30 to 40 hertz. So uh, for the advanced meditators, there's a very high gamma power in the frontal and the occipital regions. And uh, this was less for the novices and controls. So this is one thing which was uh, uh, surprising, like um, the gamma in the frontal region for the controls, uh, this needs to be interpreted. And uh, so this is what we have observed from the pranayam and the meditation data. So ultimately the take home message is uh, as a lot of studies in the, uh, in the field show already, meditation trains attention. And because of that sense of attention, the meta awareness develops wherein, wherein one notices the thoughts going on in the mind. One notices the emotions going on in the mind without you know, getting identified with those thoughts and emotions without judging them, without labeling them. Because the person doesn't judge and label the thoughts and emotions and feelings, he doesn't get identified. Because he doesn't get identified with the mental processes, he doesn't lead to, you know, stress, or anxiety, depression, or any of these uh, conditions. So basically, studies show that mind wandering leads to anxiety, stress, and etc. And with meditation, mind wandering decreases. And because of which, the sense of well-being is very high. And uh, because of which mental issues can be taken care of. And meditation uh, creates pleasantness from within. So what, uh, ha what is happening in the world right now is that most of the activities which human, humans perform is in pursuit of happiness, is in pursuit of you know, well-being, pursuit of joy from the outside. Because of that, it's a, it's an, it's an, it's never, it's a never happening process. It, it never happens. Happiness, you know, kind of eludes all the time. But when, what with meditation and pranayama and all these yogic practices, what happens is that there's a sense of pleasantness, the sense of relaxation, happiness, which happens from within. Because that happens from within, the external pursuit stops. And this leads to, you know, high sense of well being. And meditation ultimately, trains the body and mind so that once mind, once mental content takes instruction from the person, you know, the mind behaves the way you want. It's like you, you become the master of your mind and not, you know, become the slave of your mind and take instructions from it and then get stressed out and, you know, all these situations won't arise. So ultimately it, it increases self-regulation and that leads to or uh, enhanced well-being. So this is one quote I want to end with. So meditation is the only freedom as it is a dimension beyond the mind. All the stress and struggle are of the mind. So meditation trains a person to handle his own mind and also transcend the mind. So yeah. I'm sorry, I'm, so I'm going to have to cut you off.
because you have a lot of questions yeah. and uh, thank you so and much. Thank you so much. Yeah. yes yes I'm so uh, the first question is from Alina Jacobs okay. um, can you see the questions uh, on your end uh. Saket, can you see the questions in the Q&A? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, I thought that usually when you have yes. high gamma power, you have lower, yes. uh, low frequency power. However, it looks like you are showing the opposite. And I think this was correlated in all of the your cohorts, but to different degrees, is that right? Yes. So it uh, it's not like that. There's a lot of variability because one thing is, uh, it depends on what kind of mutation uh, is what kind of meditation we are studying. There are so many different forms of meditation, uh, you know, practices ranging from open monitoring to focused attention to, you know, non-dual awareness, to mant mantra meditation. There's so many practices. Because of the heterogeneity in the practice, uh, this might be seen in some of the studies. But in, in this study, which is a kind of focused attention, at the same time, there is a certain awareness of the mental content. Uh, we we uh, saw higher uh, theta at the same time, higher gamma power. And uh, uh, actually this was also reported in one of the other studies from our lab, wherein we showed both high theta, high gamma, and also uh, high alpha power for the advanced practitioners. And gamma is usually seen only in the advanced practitioners and not uh, reported in uh, kind of novice practitioners or you know those with very less practice of meditation. So that is the first one. The results you showed were averaged across each group of participants, right? Were they consistent across all participants of each group? Yes. The what I showed was uh, what I showed was uh, an uh, group averages. Uh, were they consistent across all participants? Uh, this individual analysis haven't have, we have not done yet. But again, um, as I told. It also depends on the participant. For example, advanced meditator, it doesn't mean that all the advanced meditators will show the similar kind of results. Some will have a lower power during meditation. Some will have higher power. It again comes down to the individual personality. There are a lot of individual you know, variables which come into picture. For example, uh, even in two advanced meditators, if you take one can be very you know, proficient practitioner. One with one practices with a lot of devotion and a lot of, you know, intensity which might not be there in another person so okay. because of which, yes. sorry we're going to be kicked out in a few seconds so uh oh, maybe we can okay move on yeah. to the next question yes sure sure can you explain the results in controls and novices for meditation factors was there theta power greater in frontal region in control and novices so theta power uh, yeah so there was, uh, yes, we, this is a uh, three group comparison. We have not done the, you know, advanced business controls, advanced business novices, etc. That is the next step actually. So this is like a three group study. And this is what we see right now uh, in the occipital regions, actually. The, the frontal regions, there are no significant differences. So wherein each, here each red dot indicates a significant difference, electrode with significant difference. So in the frontal regions, uh, there is no significant difference, actually. So this is not, uh, you know, it could not be um, an actual finding in that sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, next question. Uh, somebody's asking, Lu Wang uh, asked about uh, the significance between advanced and controls or between advanced and novices. Or so did you do a multiple comparison? No, this is a, this is a three group comparison. We have not done the uh, two group post hoc test so far. Okay. All uh, right. Yeah. yeah. And the last uh, question is, would you say that as the novices were not that different from controls, that meditation only shows its positive effects when done on a professional level? Uh, not necessarily. Again, as I told, it depends on how the person approaches meditation. If a person approaches meditation with a sense of, you know, sense of devotion and sense of, you know, uh, you know, sense of involvement, then even one meditation session can make a difference. Even with studies show that actually even a 15 minute session leads you know, leads to changes at the genetic level and also at the uh, brain level. So it, it all depends on how you approach it and how with how much devotion you do the practice. That's all. Okay. So uh, Saket, thank you so much. For